News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is live with these new details. Taylor? Craig and Terry, John McGregor says he felt he was addicted to painkillers the very first time he popped one into his mouth. He said he was born with a condition that caused his chest to grow inward, and although he had surgery to correct it when he was still a toddler, he was still having pain issues after high school. He said his doctor gave him a Lortab prescription with no refills, but McGregor told the judge when the pills ran out, he turned to the streets. McGregor eventually started using heroin and stealing to fuel his addiction. I got to the point that I couldn't get out of bed unless I had it. Um, I'm talking about I wouldn't even want to answer my phone unless I knew you could help me get a pill. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think this could happen to you? No, no, not by this, the, the choice of one pill. I would have never thought and I would be there. The Johnson & Johnson attorney asked McGregor if he'd ever used their fentanyl patch. He said he and other addicts he knew felt the fentanyl patch was the next level of drug abuse and a death sentence, so he steered clear from that. I'll have more details from today's testimony tonight on my Facebook page. Live in Norman, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. Oklahoma's attorney general says his team feels confident they've shown the judge everything they need to to prove Johnson & Johnson was at the forefront of the state's opioid crisis. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb joins us with how the state is now wrapping up its case. Taylor. Craig and Lori, both the state and Johnson & Johnson's attorney had extensive questions for the state's last witness for now. Commissioner Terry White works for the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services and helped create the state's plan to fix the painkiller epidemic. White accused J&J &J of causing the oversupply of opioids that caused the crisis in the first place. She showed the judge an influencer map from 2009 that showed all the people, including doctors and pharmacists, she says Johnson & Johnson targeted to encourage the prescribing of more opioids. Johnson & Johnson and Janssen, who created this entire document and these pages that we're going to look at, their goal was to influence everyone on this map to end up prescribing more Nucenta, more opioids. This is during 2009, because remember, this, this product wasn't released until the height of the opioid crisis. Attorney General Mike Hunter says they feel good about where they're leaving their case as Johnson & Johnson starts its case tomorrow. The state is being allowed to call one more witness, a Johnson & Johnson sales rep, when she returns from vacation later on in the trial. Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. After seven weeks of testimony, attorneys will present their final arguments in Oklahoma's historic trial against drug maker Johnson & Johnson. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb has been following the trial since the beginning and joins us live now from Norman. Taylor. Dave and Leanne, the state of Oklahoma has argued throughout this trial that Johnson & Johnson is the kingpin of the country's opioid crisis. We'll hear more of that argument today. The state's attorneys say the drug company marketed opioids to be safe and non-addictive and that the company's sales reps pushed doctors into prescribing more painkillers than necessary. Johnson & Johnson's attorneys say differently. They've argued that their opioid products were approved by the FDA and came with a warning label. They've also argued it's up to doctors to write prescriptions responsibly. One OKC pain doctor testified that he'd prescribe opioids to his own family members. I like to recommend to you what I would recommend if this was my wife or my mother or my family member. If it's not good enough for them, then I shouldn't be recommending it for you. The state of Oklahoma tried to discredit Dr. Phillips by saying he'd made conflicting statements about the opioid epidemic. The state has also argued that several of Johnson & Johnson's witnesses have been better for them than for the drug maker. Closing arguments start at 9. I'll be in the courtroom to bring you live updates. Live in Norman, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. After seven weeks of testimony, attorneys will present their final arguments in Oklahoma's historic trial against opioid maker Johnson & Johnson. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb has been following this trial since the beginning, and she's there for the ending today in Norman. Taylor, good morning.
Good morning, Dave and Leanne. As you guys can imagine, there's been a lot of back and forth between the attorneys in this trial. And of course, there's a lot of money on the line. The state's asking for around $17 billion to fund a plan they say will fix Oklahoma's opioid crisis. The judge actually thanked the attorneys for remaining respectful to each other at one point during the trial, but that doesn't mean things haven't gotten heated. Just last week, Johnson & Johnson's attorneys made a request that the judge go ahead and call the whole trial off and rule in their favor. They argued that holding them accountable for opioid addiction is the same thing as holding fast food restaurants like McDonald's accountable for the country's obesity problem. Attorneys for the state called that argument reprehensible and offensive. And the assertion of a public nuisance claim against a single manufacturer with a tiny share of the market is not the way to address the opioid crisis in the state of Oklahoma. They don't care about helping the state. They don't care about being at the commission. They don't care about helping abate this crisis. They care about protecting their backside. That's it. That's the moral fabric of Johnson & Johnson right there. Ultimately, the judge denied Johnson & Johnson's request to rule in their favor. Closing arguments start at 9 o'clock this morning. I'll be in the courtroom to bring you live updates. Live in Norman, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. First at noon, attorneys for Johnson & Johnson are delivering closing arguments right now to the judge in Oklahoma's opioid trial. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb has been following the trial since the beginning and is in Norman with what the state of Oklahoma had to say today. State attorney Brad Beckworth calls Johnson & Johnson's case nothing but a sham. One of the most theatrical moments in the trial so far happened when Beckworth likened Johnson & Johnson's work with opioids to a game show called Who Wants to Be a Pain Franchise Billionaire? Game show theme music played and Beckworth put up the question, what is the rate of iatrogenic addiction, which means addiction caused by medical treatment? He played on the phone a friend and pulled the audience options to show how Johnson & Johnson's witnesses were all over over the place and what they believed that rate of addiction to be. He called Johnson & Johnson a greedy company who cared about nothing else but making money. They engaged in a game. That's all it was to them. They refer to the people that have died as units. They scoff and make fun of the state for not running their lives and deception. It has been a game and it has all been about money. That's all it ever will be to them. Johnson & Johnson is giving their closing arguments now. I'll let you know what they have to say tonight at 5 o'clock. In Norman, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. New at 5, Oklahoma's opioid trial is over for now. Attorneys for the state and Johnson & Johnson, Johnson presented their final arguments to the judge today. And now we're waiting for him to make a decision. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is at the Cleveland County Courthouse with what happened today. The judge gave attorneys on both sides two hours to leave their final impressions after seven weeks of testimony. Johnson & Johnson's lead attorney Larry Ottaway talked about how the company's drugs are innovative and unlike any other opioids on the market. Ottaway brought up the numerous doctors who testified in defense of the drug maker who talked about how essential painkillers are for chronic pain patients when it comes to function and quality of life. He again pushed against the state's plan to fix the opioid crisis, saying it's not fully developed and is budgeting billions of dollars for programs the state already provides. We didn't run from this case. I told you at the very beginning, only a company that believes it's innocent would come in and defend itself from an action brought by the state on behalf of the state to benefit the state, to be decided by a man working for the state, sitting under the state seal, but we've taken the challenge on because we believe we're wrong. Attorneys for the state argued that since Johnson & Johnson started the opioid epidemic, it's up to them to pay for it, not the taxpayers. I'll have more on the state's closing arguments tonight at 6. At the Cleveland County Courthouse, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. Testimony is over and now we await the judge's decision in Oklahoma's opioid trial. Attorneys had their last chance to leave an impression on the judge today. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is at the Cleveland County Courthouse with what happened on this final day of arguments. 
The state of Oklahoma called out Johnson and Johnson for putting on a defense they say is nothing but a sham. The state argued throughout the trial that Johnson and Johnson caused Oklahoma's opioid crisis by misleading doctors, pharmacists and patients. State's attorneys say they did that by marketing the drugs as safe and non addictive. Of course, the drug maker denies that claiming 0% responsibility for the painkiller epidemic. Attorneys for J&J told the judge it's up to doctors to write prescriptions responsibly. But state's attorney Brad Beckworth said this crisis started all the way at the top. Your Honor, that argument, I mean, Mr. Otway is one heck of a lawyer and I sure admire him and like him, but the defense of Johnson & Johnson in this case, it defies logic. I mean, where did the crisis come from? Did we just have a bunch of addicted, troubled opioid use disorder victims lying around in wait in the state and somebody poured water on it in 1996 and they just sprouted and grew and grew and grew? Where did they come from? The state is asking for around $17 billion to fund its plan to fix the opioid problem. The judge says he could take up to a month to make his final decision. At the Cleveland County Courthouse, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. They just wrapped up a news conference moments ago, and News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is inside the courthouse with what their reaction was today. Lori, we just heard from Johnson and Johnson attorney Sabrina Strong, and she says they are very disappointed in the judge's decision today, calling it wrong and unfair. She says they're already working on drafting up an appeal. Johnson and Johnson said several times throughout this trial they never would have taken this to trial if they didn't believe they were right. They say this decision changes nothing. They still do not believe they bear any responsibility for the state or the country's opioid crisis. Here's a snippet of what Sabrina Strong had to say. We have sympathy for all who suffer from substance abuse. But Johnson and Johnson did not cause the opioid abuse crisis here in Oklahoma or anywhere in this country. The $572 million the judge ordered them to pay will go towards just one year of the state's plan to fix the crisis, but Johnson & Johnson says even that is too much. I'll have more tonight from their side at 5 and 6. Live at the Cleveland County Courthouse, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is inside the courthouse with that side of the story. Taylor? Lori, Johnson & Johnson's attorney spoke with us just in the last hour. They say the judge's ruling is unfair, unconstitutional, and, and flawed. Attorney Sabrina Strong says evidence in trial proved their medication was not highly abused and only amounted to 1% of opioid prescriptions in the state. She says all their drugs were highly regulated by the DEA and the FDA and that they truly created their opioid medications because they care about patients and wanted to cure chronic pain. Strong says the judge's decision changes nothing for them. They do not regret bringing this to trial, and they still do not believe Johnson & Johnson is at fault. She talked about the two other companies who settled before the trial even started. She says they would have never brought this to trial this time if they didn't think they would win this battle. We are uh, disappointed and disagree with the judge's decision. We believe that it is flawed. There was not a single Oklahoma patient or family member who testified about abuse or misuse of any Johnson & Johnson medicine. Strong says this ruling violates Johnson & Johnson's constitutional rights. I'll tell you why tonight at 6. Live in Cleveland County, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb has that side of the story for us. Taylor? Lori, Johnson & Johnson says they have strong grounds to appeal the judge's decision. They say his decision was unfair and unconstitutional. And like you said, even though the state initially asked for $17.5 billion, Johnson & Johnson thinks what they're being asked to pay is too much. One of their biggest issues with the state's case and the judge's decision is the fact that the state filed the lawsuit as a public nuisance. Judge Thad Balkman says the state proved public nuisance law applied here because Johnson & Johnson endangered the health 
and safety of Oklahomans. Here's a clip where Johnson and Johnson attorneys explain why that law does not apply. Today's decision reflects a radical departure from more than a century of case law in this state. For over a hundred years, public nuisance law has been limited to property disputes where one misuses their property and causes harm to another. The decision violates well-established constitutional principles. Johnson & Johnson says they are already drafting that appeal. They say the appeal process could last until 2021. Lori. A Cleveland County judge ruled today that Johnson & Johnson contributed to Oklahoma's opioid crisis and ordered them to pay $572 million. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb has the response from one family who lost a loved one to an opioid overdose. Austin Box is a well-known name in Oklahoma. He's a former OU football player who died of opioid overdose in 2011. But now he's known for more than football. He's also known for being one of the faces that led Oklahoma to victory in this case. Austin Box's dad, Craig, is elated tonight. He says this case is about so much more than money. Well, for me, it's, it's somewhat vindication. You can forget the money for just a minute. It's a finding that they were a cause of this nuisance that's taken, has caused a part in so many deaths in the state of Oklahoma for a number of years. Austin's mom, Gail, says they've been working to educate people about the risk of painkillers since her son died. She says the judge's decision today is a big step in the right direction. Nothing's going to bring my son back, but this victory allows his his death to stand for something and I know he, he's cheering right now. He was a team player and and this is a victory for Team Oklahoma. Oklahoma Attorney General Mike Hunter says they prepare for this trial for two years, covering every base possible with a much smaller attorney team than their opponents. We will look back on this dark period and know that we stood up for Oklahomans to take on Goliath. It has not been easy. Johnson and Johnson's attorneys, of course, are singing a very different tune today. They say the judge's decision was unfair and unconstitutional, and they have every plan to appeal. When you're right, you fight. And that's precisely what you're seeing here. The company here made medicines that are essential for patients who suffer from debilitating harm. That's what they did. They did it responsibly. Johnson and Johnson's attorneys say that appeal process could last until 2021. In Cleveland County, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. A judge's landmark decision in the state's opioid case against Johnson & Johnson is leaving pain patients with a lot of questions. A Cleveland County judge ruled the drug maker is responsible for creating the state's opioid crisis and ordered them to pay $572 million. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb joins us now with why some patients are worried about the fallout from that. Taylor? Craig and Terry, I talked to one woman who says she's taken opioids for more than 30 years. She asked the same question to me that I've been asked countless times since the opioid trial started. She wants to know how she'll continue to function if opioids are taken off the shelves. Robin Arnall lives alone and works from home. She suffers from Crohn's disease and spinal stenosis, two very painful conditions she treats with opioids. I take this medication because I can't function without it. Arnall has taken Norco for more than 30 years as prescribed. She says she's not an addict, but without her medication, her life would be drastically different. I wouldn't be able to walk. I couldn't play with my dog. Arnall says she's a productive member of society now, but she says Monday's decision to hold Johnson & Johnson accountable for Oklahoma's opioid crisis worries her. She fears drug makers will stop producing opioids altogether. I don't know how my pain can be managed and how I can continue to work and support myself 
and it scares me. Tulsa addiction and pain specialist Dr. William Yarborough says Arnold's fear is common. There's not very many doctors out there that want to mess with this because of the risk. Dr. Yarborough says he worries about patients like Arnall, who have relied on opioids to function for so many years. He says the withdrawals she could go through if she no longer had access to those medications could be very dangerous. It, it's really had per perhaps an unintended effect, but there's people that have suffered because of some of this. The state of Oklahoma said several times throughout their case that it is not their intention to take opioids away from people who truly need them and use them appropriately. Live in Tulsa, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. Lawsuit against drug maker Johnson & Johnson. So the fight now is over how much Johnson & Johnson will actually end up paying to fix the state's opioid crisis. News on 6's Taylor Newcomb is live in Norman with what happened in court today. Taylor. Craig and Lori, the judge admitted in court today that he did make a mathematical error in his original decision. He'd ordered Johnson & Johnson to pay $107 million for one part of the state's plan to fix the opioid crisis, but now the judge says that was a miscalculation. He says that could be fixed in his final decision, but that's not all Oklahoma's attorneys are asking for. The state says it'll cost more than $572 million for just one year of the plan, which is how much Johnson & Johnson has been ordered to pay. Mental health experts and addiction specialists testified the plan would need at least 20 years to fix the crisis and state's attorneys say it's the judge's duty and responsibility to make sure this crisis is fixed now that he's identified it exists. No one testified that it would just be a year. Uh, it was many, many years. State's still suffering. Hadn't gotten any better. People are dying, they're going to continue to die. You talked a lot about neonatal abstinence syndrome uh, in various parts of your order. All these problems are just too, too real. And to stop short of doing what has to be done here, that would be terrible. Johnson & Johnson's attorneys say the state's proposed plan to do a yearly evaluation was never brought up in trial, and for that reason, they don't believe the judge should even entertain it. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, why Johnson & Johnson says they deserve credit for settlements other companies initially named in this lawsuit have agreed to pay. Live in Norman, Taylor Newcomb, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6.